Having photos of a finished cosplay project is a great way to document all of the time and effort and energy that went into it long after you're finished with it. And of course, that helps you share all of that work and progress that you've made over on social media. But it's not always possible to partner with a photographer or to rope a friend into taking some photos for you. And that's where self-portrait or selfie cosplay photo shoots come in. So in this video, I'm going to take you through some tips, tricks, and basic tools that you'll need to take your own cosplay play photos. To start, you'll need a camera, which is probably pretty obvious. To get good photos, you don't need to use a fancy DSLR camera with a really nice expensive lens. It is helpful, but it's certainly not a necessity. Most modern cell phones take really great photos these days and are great and totally fine to use for your cosplay photo shoot. As an example, this picture of Aloy was taken with an iPhone, where this picture of Aloy was taken with a DSLR Lumix G7 with a micro four thirds 14 millimeter equivalent lens. Regardless of the camera that you're using, you'll want to try and shoot your photos using the raw file format. This is a format that preserves way more information than a standard JPEG or PNG, which will give you so much more to work with when you're editing your final photos. You can see in this example of Aloy, where uh, I had some areas that were overexposed and underexposed, because I was using the file format, there was so much more information, I was able to brighten and darken areas and make the final photo work really well. DSLR cameras will have a setting that will allow you to automatically shoot in RAW either in addition to or instead of the traditional JPEG format. And there are some third-party apps for Android and for Apple that will allow you to shoot in RAW using your phone. For self-portrait shoots, you'll also want some sort of remote for your camera, whether it's a cell phone or DSLR. For my cell phone, I just use a little Bluetooth remote that came with the selfie stick that I have. For my DSLR camera, there's an app that I can use with my phone that allows me to shoot and view the photos remotely. You'll also probably wanna set your camera up to take photos on a timer like two or 10 seconds, just to give you a little bit more time to hit that pose after you hit the shutter button. Lastly, you'll need some sort of stand or tripod for your camera. There are lots of Great, basic, sturdy photography tripods. Make sure you get something that's like tall enough when it's fully extended that it can sit at eye level because otherwise you'll have to get creative about propping it up on other things. You might also find just a convertible selfie stick that can double as a tripod or as an actual selfie stick. There are links down in the description below to all of the various gear and other accoutrements that I list in this video. Once you have your camera all sorted out, you obviously need a place to take your photos. For a really basic and simple setup, you can just use a simple mono-colored backdrop. A, a large piece of fabric will totally work, a sheet. It doesn't have to be anything particularly fancy or in a specific color, although obviously you can go out and buy cool backdrops with fun prints and patterns on them. I recommend uh, either plain black or plain white, uh, whichever one's going to contrast better or, or allow your costume to pop against it better. Though a plain white backdrop can give you some interesting things that you can do with color and lighting bouncing off of it, which we'll get into in a little bit. Alternatively, you could also just grab a sheet of bright green, green screen colored fabric and just edit yourself out into like cool and unusual settings. If you are using a large piece of fabric, just make sure you iron it before you use it. Not that I'm speaking from experience of having to edit out a lot of wrinkles. Also try to make sure that it is large enough that you can take some full body shots on it if you obviously want to take any full body shots and maybe even large enough to extend slightly underneath your feet so that you can take those images entirely upon your backdrop. You can also add set dressing to your backdrops. Other fabrics and colors and textures can make the backing of your picture a little bit more interesting, or you can even get really creative and throw in some pieces of furniture. You can see with my Shakespeare photo shoot, I did a lot. <laughs> I really wanted to recreate the feeling of being inside that dressing room. So I used my mirror and my dress form. I hung up other costumes and cosplays. And obviously once I used the mirror, I had to like set up a whole backdrop behind me and got really creative to create uh, a very intimate setting in a relatively small space. Alternatively, you can repurpose an area of your home. For my card capture Sakura pajama shoot, I did it in my bedroom with a few adjustments and, and like some clean sheets and made my bed and uh, took a couple things down and put a couple things up just to make a, a cutesy sort of backdrop for a pajama photo shoot. Lighting is probably one of the most important aspects for a good self-portrait photo shoot. As a base, you'll want to aim, sh aim to make sure you are brightly and evenly lit. A very basic setup is two diffused lights, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm doing here, that are set at about 45 degree angles away from you, the subject of the image. 
Soft boxes or LED panels that give you a nice diffused lighting are really great options. Just make sure that the bulbs that you put in them or the panels themselves are bright enough to give you some even lighting. Uh, in a pinch, you can also use just regular lamps that you have around the house, like floor lamps or desk lamps. Again, just make sure that they are bright enough or cluster enough of them together to give yourself enough bright lighting. I tend to combine my LED panels, my soft boxes, uh, with a, just really a hodgepodge of different lighting things, as well as some room lights as well, just to make sure that the area is bright enough to light my entire person. I recommend for your lights, generally stick to white or daylight LED bulbs, as they're just a little bit more flexible. You can always adjust the color temperature more easily away from that in your editing process process. If you have flexible or adjustable LED lights, you can always play around with that, which brings us to things that you can do beyond your basic lighting. You can create moods and really interesting effects with your lighting when you don't have access to like an interesting backdrop or a location shoot. A lot of this is just going to be a matter of trial and error, trying different things, seeing what works, seeing what you end up liking. I use some Wi-Fi bulbs. I have the LIFX brands. They are Wi-Fi bulbs that I can adjust with an app on my phone, but you'll find other ones that are remote controlled that work just as well. When it comes to lighting with color, you can just light your backdrop to make it a little bit more interesting or contrast your cosplay more. You can also get creative, light one side with one color or another side with another color and like do some weird split screening stuff or maybe just uh, a bunch of white lights on one side and then highlight with a colored light on the other. Again, like I said, it's just a matter of trial and error, doing things until you find something that you think looks pretty cool, but have fun with it. Finally, once you have your photo shot, you're gonna need to edit them. Because you'll likely have been relying on autofocus and exposure settings on your camera, you might find your pictures from your self-portrait shoot are gonna need a little bit more love than they would otherwise. For my photo editing, I use Lightroom. It's the Adobe Creative Cloud program. It's really great for adjusting color, lighting, exposure, balancing, and it's got a lot of built-in features, including edits to specific areas and more. Darktable is a good free open source alternative to Lightroom that has more or less most of the features that you will find in Lightroom with the advantages and disadvantages of being open source. As a baseline, I tend to do a few minor adjustments like throw on auto settings and then kind of play around until I get a look that I like. Filters and presets can also be really helpful to use, just some things to bring out the colors and the picture and really make your cosplay pop. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what other cosplay information, tutorials, and tips and tricks you'd like me to make a video on next. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe this video for that sweet algorithmy goodness, and check me out live on twitch.tv slash random Tuesday, where I'm always happy to answer questions and I often work on cosplay, or head over to my website randomtuesday.com for more cosplay patterns, tutorials, and other information. Lastly, and as always, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon who made this video possible. If you'd like to support more videos and more resources, please consider supporting over on Patreon. Any amount is truly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.